So welcome to uh, part B of the week one lecture. And uh, we're now going to look at an introduction to Lean Six Sigma. So for many of you out there, the business challenges really haven't changed. If anything, they're getting more intense. But if you look at the laser pointer here, the customer's demands are increasing. I mean, customers want lower prices. Your response has to be lower costs. And the customer wants shorter delivery times and your response has to be shorter process lead times or process cycle times. Now we will talk about the difference between lead time and cycle time. But uh, some of the typical Lean Six Sigma implementations in the early days, you know, um, from Womack and Jones and some of the research that has been done, shown there's a 10 to 20% increase in output or throughput and a 30% decrease in cycle time on certain processes. And that would have been replicated across many industries, both manufacturing and service sectors. Lean Sigma is really a journey. <clears throat> and the journey, like all journeys, is where do you want to be? So in order to determine that, you've got to set some goals and objectives. Maybe you want to grow 10%. Maybe you want to be the biggest um, provider of a certain product or service. Um, you may want to benchmark against your competitors, see where the industry is going. And there are some tools, um, one here I mentioned is called VOC, Voice of the Customer. So sometimes just asking your customer, doing focus groups, you can get a lot of information back. And uh, we will look at this in more detail in the next lecture. Now oftentimes where we are is quite, uh, seems like quite a simple question, but actually a lot of times people don't know where they are. Uh, they don't have current metrics for some of their key performance indicators or KPIs, and they're not collecting the data. So they really don't know where they are. I suppose an example you could compare it to is, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to run a marathon uh, next year, and someone said, well, what does it currently take you to run maybe a kilometer or two kilometers? And you probably don't know. Um, so you do need to get some baseline data. And then finally, how to get there. and. We're going to use the Lean and Six Sigma tools. They're not the only ones, but um, they definitely can help you get there. And we'll discuss those in more detail. <clears throat> so moving on now, we look at uh, what is Lean Six Sigma. So Lean, you'll see the word waste show up. Lean is reducing waste by improving process flow. Six Sigma is a structured problem solving process. It's a couple of other things as well. Uh, it's also considered uh, very low defect rates, 3.4 parts per million, which we'll talk about in uh, future lectures. And we want to improve quality by reducing variation. And then if we put both Lean and Six Sigma together, we basically get a structured problem solving process. We get improved faster processes and we get greater efficiency. Now you may say, I just want to use one or the other, but Lean and Six Sigma are both required because Lean really doesn't really look at the quality elements. It doesn't look at bringing the process under statistical control. And Six Sigma really on its own doesn't really look at improving process flow and reducing waste. So we're going to be talking about the wastes in future lectures and the seven wastes of Lean. So you can see that both Lean and Six Sigma together are very powerful. So let's go on now and spend a little bit of time looking just at Six Sigma. So the goal of Six Sigma is to eliminate the variation within the process. And that gives quality problems. It gives dissatisfied customers. The other thing about Six Sigma is the tools are based on collecting data and then analyzing that data, doing statistical analysis of the data. Six Sigma also is this structured problem solving DMake or define, measure, analyze, improve, control. And we will spend a lecture on each of these uh, five phases. And the key is that it works for all processes, both manufacturing and service transactional. And Six Sigma is based on having the right metrics. Now there's three key metrics for any organization. Uh, time, how quick you deliver, but that can be broken down into cycle time, lead time, setup time, and so on. Quality, which we will again look at. We have uh, PPM levels, uh, DPU levels, DPMO levels, and so on. So we can break all of these down into um, minute detail, 
in some cases maybe too much but at least give you some options and then cost and you don't have to be the lowest cost you can be a competitive cost so that's where Six Sigma or what it's about and we now look at um, really just the origin of Six Sigma just step back a little bit now Six Sigma's around for a long time or some of the tools and they've really come under the Six Sigma lean umbrella probably in the last 20 years and some people may say they're dated but actually Six Sigma has yet to find its way into a lot of areas um, <clears throat> but I suppose the good news is that if they're around this long then you know they've been well proven um, and tested right uh, so in the 1930s some of the work you can look at Walter Schuhart did in Bell Labs and control charts in the 1970s the uh, Toyota production system in the Japanese automobile industry there was a lot of study groups went out there from the US um, Motorola is widely credited with developing Six Sigma in the mid 1980s and then by the late 1990s about two-thirds of the fortune 500 organizations in the u.s had begun six sigma initiatives um, because they really had to reduce costs improve quality or they would have been out of business so we're going to look at the six sigma demake process demake stands for define if you follow the laser pointer measure analyze improve and control so in the define phase what we're really trying to understand is what's important what are the critical to quality characteristics for the customer in the measure phase we want to collect some data and measure that performance in the analyze phase we're going to analyze the data and the reasons for the variation in the improve phase we're going to quantify potential solutions we're going to try and maybe um, select the final solution and then verify it and then finally in the control phase we've got to guarantee ongoing performance ongoing process control and implementing um, a control plan now we will look at each of these phases in more detail as we go through the lectures now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Six Sigma roles within your organization in Six Sigma GE really uh, made this popular where they had this concept of a Six Sigma champion within the organization some large organizations have master black belts other organizations typically have black belts and green belts and then some companies have implemented a yellow belt which is really an introductory um, level qualification but the main one really that you'll come across is green belts um, and black belts within or within organizations now what do these uh, black belts and green belts do so we'll have a look at the next slide well a black belt again is a full-time role the black belts will be very very highly trained in statistical the Six Sigma statistical tool set and the Six Sigma DMAIC process knowledge. Their job is to lead the projects and manage the uh, green belts. The green belt, which is a more common role, will be uh, process engineers, for example, and others trained by black belts or external training. And their role is to support Six Sigma projects in their department, or although it could also be across departments, assist with data collection analysis and it's approximately uh, three months of training and a green belt completed for certification all Six Sigma projects for certification must show a financial saving so just to finish up this section here <clears throat> say why organizations need Six Sigma and one of the things that's seen in Six Sigma is that when you base your decisions on facts and data rather than just opinion um, then you reduce this dependency on tribal knowledge within the organization so you, you, you become a data-driven organization. Um, Six Sigma also helps attack the difficult problems. So sometimes there's ongoing chronic problems, what, what I referred to earlier as common cause variation. Um, and it isn't always apparent where the solution lies. So having a structured Six Sigma DMake process uh, helps you identify that and ultimately improves quality and customer satisfaction. Um, with the DMAC process, then you get a disciplined approach to problem solving, which benefits the organization, often changes the company culture. Um, if you do that and you improve your quality customer satisfaction, you will get a competitive advantage uh, by increasing sales and profits. Okay, so that's uh, the end of this section. And in future lectures now, we'll, we'll look at uh, Lean.